So this is the group B piece, which means it's not played with a backing track. Okay, so it's a solo piece. So it's just us as the drummer playing this piece. So if you look at the sheet music at the top, in the middle, you can see we've got the song title, About Time. Beneath that to the left, it says Steady Swing. So that's the genre or the style of music this piece is. Beside that, it says a quarter note equals 80. So that's the tempo. So the pulse we feel for this piece is a quarter note pulse. And those quarter notes are going to be coming at a rate of 80 per minute. That's the tempo. Beside that, we've got a little key there. So it says two eighth notes equal a quarter note triplet on the downbeat and an eighth note triplet on the upbeat. So what that means is when we see two eighth notes in this piece, obviously normally when we play eighth notes, we play the downbeat and the and, the midpoint of the beat. But in this piece, we're still going to play those downbeats on the downbeat. So the, the first eighth note on the downbeat, but the second um, eighth note on the upbeat, we're going to play late. So rather than play it on the and, the midpoint of the beat, we're going to play on the a. Ah. Okay, so we're going to play it later in the beat. All right, so that's what swing is. We're going to swing those upbeat eighth notes. All the ands we're going to play later than usual. Okay, so that's what that key means. So that we're going to be playing that swing rhythm. And then if we look at, well, we can see we've got letter A in a the box there, letting us know the first section of the song, section A. And then in the first bar of music, we've got our percussion clef, letting us know it's drum notation on the stave. And then we've got our time signature next to that. So we've got a four at the top, telling us there's four beats in the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the four at the bottom tells you those beats that you're feeling and counting are quarter notes. You've got four quarter notes in the bar. Right, so looking at our first bar of music, we've got quarter notes on the ride symbol. So one, two, three, four with the right hand on ride. Left hand is joining in on the snare drum on the one and the four. So you've got one together, two and three on the ride, four together. So you've got. And you can see my ride cymbal sizzling because what I've got here is this, uh, it's called the minor cymbal bacon, okay? And it just attaches underneath the felt of your ride stand and it just lays across the ride cymbal. And it replicates the sound of a rivet cymbal. So you can see at the bottom of the piece it said, ride cymbal notes may be played on a rivet cymbal throughout if desired. So you don't need to play this on a rivet cymbal, you can just play it on a standard ride cymbal. But if you wanna add that authentic sound of this style of music where we've got a nice sizzle on the ride cymbal, you can have a play with a rivet cymbal. So rivets are actually drilled into the cymbal. So you drill holes into the cymbal and then put rivets in and they give a nice sizzling sound to the cymbal, some longer sustain. Now rivet cymbals, obviously an added expense, because you need to buy another cymbal. If you've got one, great, you can use it, but if you need to get one, obviously that's a big expense. You can either buy a rivet cymbal where rivets are, are actually um, put into the cymbal, or you can put rivets into your current cymbal, but obviously that's another expense, because you need to get that done, and also it alters the sound of your cymbal permanently. Okay, so a good inexpensive way to do that without altering the sound of your cymbal permanently is to just get one of these chains. So different brands do them, and all I do is go underneath the felt of your cymbal stand, they lay across your cymbal, and obviously as you hit them, as the cymbal vibrates, the chain makes contact with the cymbal and gives a nice sizzle sound. So it sounds like a rivet cymbal, but you haven't got that expense or need to alter your cymbal permanently. Okay, so it's a good, good way of doing it. So look into that if you wanna sort of add that sound to this piece. Again, it's not essential, you can just use a standard ride. Okay, so that's your first bar. The dynamic of that bar underneath it says MF, mezzo forte, which means half loud. So you play that about a normal normal playing level. Then in the next bar, you've still got quarter notes on the ride cymbal, snare drums joining in on the free. Next bar, snare drums joining in on two. And then the final bar, the snare drum joins in on the one and the three. Okay, so we're gonna try the whole line now, the whole of the top line of the piece. So the ride cymbal is playing quarter notes throughout and the left hand on the snare drum is just joining in at different parts, depending on what bar you're playing. Okay, so we're gonna try the whole of line one. And then in line two, we've got some fill. So the first fill is a quarter note fill. We've got two snares, 
two kick drums, two bass drums. So we're going to play right, left on snare, and bass, bass. We got. So just quarter notes on, just hitting those down beats. In the next bar, we've got three snares played as quarter notes, and then bass drum on the four. So you've got one, two, three. We'll play right, left, right on the snare, and then a kick on the four. So you've got. Okay, so those two bars together, we've got. So you've got two snares, two kicks as quarter notes, and then three snares, one kick as quarter notes. So nice, simple rhythm. In the third bar, we've got three quarter notes on the snare. So again, we'll play that as right, left, right. And then we've got two eighth notes on the snare. So remember the eighth notes, we need to play as the swing rhythm. So rather than play four and, we're gonna play four and. We're gonna delay the and. Okay, so you've got. Okay, so it's four and, a late and on the upbeat, the eighth note upbeat with that left hand. Okay, so if I play it without swinging the rhythm, we've got. But we're gonna swing that upbeat on the eighth note, we got. Okay, so if I play that back to back, so I'll play it without swinging the eighth note and then I'll play it swinging the eighth note. Okay, so we want to swing that eighth note, we want to play it late. Okay, so that's that third bar. And then the fourth bar, we've just got quarter notes on the snare for three beats, and then right cymbal on the fourth beat, quarter notes. So you've got right, left, right on snare, and then we'll play the right hand as well with the right cymbal. So you've got like a right-handed paradiddle there. Okay, so those two bars, so bars seven and eight, the last two bars of line two, we've got Okay, so remember that swung eighth note on the upbeat. Okay, to make sure you've got that. So let's try the whole of line two. And now we'll try putting those two lines together. So the first two lines of the piece, which is section A. And now we come into the third line to the start of section B. So we've got quarter notes, two quarter notes on the ride cymbal for the first bar. So you've got one, two with the right hand, and then we've got three and four on the snare drum. So again, that, that eighth note upbeat needs to be swung, played late. So rather than playing, we'll delay that left hand on the upbeat. So three and four. So you've got one, two, three and four for that bar. Okay, but in the next bar, we've just got quarter notes. You've got one, two on the uh, ride cymbal again. Left hand on snare on the three for a quarter note, right hand on the ride cymbal for a, a quarter note. So you've just got right, right, left, right. So we'll play right hands on the ride, left hand on the snare. And then those two bars together, we've got this. Okay, so get that rhythm down, get those two bars together. Then we've got quarter notes of single strokes between the ride and snare. So you've got one on ride, two on snare, three on ride, four on snare as quarter notes. So just right, left, right, left. So a nice easy bar there. And in the last bar of the piece, you've got two quarter notes on the high tom, two quarter notes on the low tom. Playing them as single strokes. Okay, so those final two bars of that line, we got. Okay, so I'll try the two bars, first two bars, and then the second two bars, and then we'll put them together to play that whole line.
So now we come into the final line of the piece. So in the first bar of the final line, we've got quarter notes. So we've got two quarter notes on the ride cymbal, one, two, and then two quarter notes on the high tom, three, four. So we're gonna play right on the ride cymbal, left on the high tom. So you've got right, right, left, left, just on the down beats. Okay, then a very similar thing in the next bar, you've got rights as quarter notes on the ride cymbal, lefts on the low tom for the three and four. So you need to make sure you move that right hand out of the way. So after you've played those quarter notes, move that right so you've got room to hit to hit the uh, floor tom with the left hand. Obviously it's easy to hit sticks here. So you can move the right across as well just to give you more room if you're worried about hitting the sticks or just make sure you're out of the way there. So we've got... So those two bars we got Okay, so just hitting those quarter notes, all those downbeats, and then we've got downbeats again for the third bar. So we've got ride, kick, ride, kick as quarter notes. And then in the final bar, we've got one, two, three on the snare, and then we've got quarter note rest on four. So it's quarter notes on the snare drum. One, two, three, right, left, right. Rest. Okay, so the last two bars of the piece, we've got Okay, so once you've got the two halves of the bar, try to put it together so we'll play the whole line. So that brings us to the end of the piece. You can see we've got that final bar line there. So let's try the whole of section B. Okay, so lines three and four of the piece. And now we're gonna put the whole piece together. So remember, there's no backing track for this piece. So we've got the tempo at the top, which says 80 beats per minute. So what we're gonna do is just put on a metronome and play this at that tempo, okay? Just so you can get a feel for how fast this piece needs to be played. Okay, remember, we wanna really bring the style of this music across. So if you can, tune your toms up nice and high like I've got on this kit. Add a rivet sound to your ride cymbal if you can. And obviously you wanna play nice and light. So the dynamic for this whole piece is mezzo forte, but this style of music, it's very acoustic. You normally play with other acoustic musicians in this style of music, so you wanna bring your playing level down a bit. There's no amplifiers, okay? So we can't really thrash out to this music, keep it nice and chilled, All right? So really bring that across in your playing as well. So now let's try the whole track at the song tempo, 80 beats per minute.
So this piece is just introducing you to this style of music. So it's, it's a good piece to practice things like the swing rhythm, the authenticity of the sounds of the kit and how you're playing, and also the coordination between the hands. Okay, so there's, there's a lot to work on, but it's just about introducing you to this style of music. Just make sure you're comfortable with all the parts, practice them at comfortable tempos for you, so you can bring the tempo down until you're comfortable, and then slowly bring them up until you're at the, the, the piece tempo, which is 80 beats, 80 beats per minute. So that's the, that's the target tempo to get to. So take as long as you need to get there, work through it and enjoy playing this piece. It's a great style of music and one we need to all get used to playing.